Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have to start right on time and uh, our guest is right here. And um, I know you've, you've seen him, you've heard about him. And uh, luckily I got to meet him yesterday and I am so glad that I have to do this today. So Scott Lucy is right here and I'm gonna tell him a little bit about him. If you didn't know, um, Scott actually um, has experience in the, in the field of networking. He began his life as a networker in 1984, originally a successful distributor and a billion, a billion dollar MLM uh, company, Milonia, in his team. In 1990, he moved to corporate management and more recently as an independent business consultant. And that is where we come in. Yay, we got him. And um, Scott has contributed to various industries and periodicals organized and spoken internationally and converted and led directly uh, in direct sales network marketing organization in the UK, USA, Canada, Japan, and Europe. He is here to stay. In 1995, he became the first Englishman to receive a certificate in network marketing management from the major American university. Hey, that's good, awesome. While studying under Dr. Charlie King at the University of Illinois, and in Chicago, UIC. He gets to, know more, uh, get to know more about Scott today and learn from his 30 year experience and people in business. He is here to support a global um, expansion in opulence global family. And ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm not gonna waste time because I have a lot of questions for him and I'm gonna definitely fire away. So, First, Scott, please, um, I have uh, mentioned your background and the guests are so eager to know you and who um, better for you to tell us exactly about yourself. Who is Scott Lucy? Well, first of all, Stella, thank you very much for inviting me. And it was such a great pleasure to meet you yesterday in London. We had a tremendous meeting. It was so much fun. Um, I got dressed up with all the gold bling and the sunglasses and we had a great time, didn't we? It was really, it was really good. And we had IFRA calling in from Canada. So it was very international. Um, ladies there from uh, different parts of the world um, that all congregated in London. And London is such an amazing city, isn't it, Stella? Because uh, we've got the whole world here and, you, you know, you can make those connections um, through really any language because the ones that live in the UK speak English. So we're very fortunate. Yeah. So I don't want to go right back in 38 years in history. That would bore everybody to death. But I could, I could tell you that uh, I had a lot of fun back in the 80s working uh, with a big network marketing company called Herbal Life. You might remember them. And uh, I, after a few months of their launch, I joined their millionaires team and got to know the founders as Mark, uh, Mark, and Larry, Mark Hughes and Larry Thompson. Sadly, Mark's gone now, but Larry's still with us. I think he's about 78. We're still in touch with each other. He was a great mentor to me. And, you know, things he taught me, I think, are still very, very relevant today. And he said, you know, it's not about where to go, what to do, what to say. It's more about your personal story, your experience on the products. And that's very true today. And we were talking about this yesterday, weren't we, Stella? Yes. Um, one lady in particular, um, she she was from, I'm just trying to think, the, the African country where she was from, um, uh, on the big table there. Can you help me? What was it? What's the, what's the country where she, she was from? The, the one from that had nine children. Oh, she's from Somalia. Somalia, Somalia, yeah. And she said, you know, if it wasn't for the products, I wouldn't be here. She said, it's, it, it's the experience I've had. And that's what I share all the time. And then once people get comfortable with the products, I then say to them, listen, why don't you become a, a member and, and join us as a partner and get the products at a discounted price? So that's still very true to this day. And I think that's the real baseline of our industry is, is people falling in love with the products mm -hmm. and then starting to understand how to build a compensation plan, how to bring in partners and how to build your business and we're very fortunate here to have you know over 200 countries that we can work with um i mean i've heard people there from 
uh, the Philippines, and um, I've spent some time out there. Amazing. Uh, Southeast Asia is amazing for network marketing. It's a really, really busy, busy area. So I encourage you, you know, reach out to people in the, in the communities you have uh, for the Philippines and Somalia. Um, you know, all these great city, uh, countries around the world are participating with us in opulence. So, yeah, moving things forward a bit, I get to, a, as you mentioned, 1995. Uh, that time I was already doing consultancy work for North American companies and I was invited by Dr. Charles King of the University of Chicago at Illinois to come on to his course. Um, so I was really fortunate to come and join that and uh, I sat next to a guy called Jeff Roberti who um, he was a waiter originally uh, but if you look up Jeff Roberti's name these days he'd made uh, 85 million dollars as a distributor. So, I mean, incredible, you know, the, where this can go, if you understand and really apply yourself, you know, this can start off as a part-time income, but it can turn into a major, major change of life, uh, which involves, you know, great experiences with people, travel around the world, and a passive income is what we're working towards. So as you retire, uh, you don't have to worry anymore. You don't have to worry about finding part-time work when you're retired. You have a nice uh, residual income that you can then pass on to your family as well. So it's amazing business. And it's not something you need to rush at, you know. It's something you need to take your time about. Building partnerships with uh, people in your team. I'd say only, only try and introduce people you like. <laughs> okay because you've got to work with them and you've got to sort of help them so we only really like to talk to nice people don't we Stella we spend all of our time talking to nice people and uh, some of them join us some of them don't we never know quite why they don't but the ones that do we have a lot of fun with you know definitely um, and I can say that I can travel around the world I've visited 137 countries in my life and most of the time I don't have to pay for a hotel because I know somebody there and I say, I'm coming. Can you put me up? And they go, sure. We've got a sofa. No problem. <laughs> so come on, uh, Stella, ask me some questions. I'm running out of steam. Okay. Um, you know, um, I have seen you do um, programs for the likes of BBC. And um, um, you also was involved in other MLMs. I don't want to mention, mention the, new, the name here, right here. But how did you get attracted uh, to Opulence Global, and how long ago did you actually um, start thinking about it, and what actually uh, brought you finally to be in Opulence Global? Ah, good question. Um, well, I, I, I basically like to look at companies um, that are ex that have a track record. This is my sort of tick box list, if you like, right? Uh, I wasn't aware of Opulence doing any business in the UK at the time, but I was seeing that they were expanding very fast around the world. And uh, I have a friend called John Solider, who is friends with Ramin, okay? So I asked John if he would reach out to Ramin and so we could have a conversation. That was, uh, that was really early this year. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't that long ago. And we started to having some talks together. And I said, you know, the thing I'm impressed about is that you're able to move your products all over the world. And fashion is a universal language. You know, people see it very easy. You don't need to explain things. Uh, you don't need to have multilingual tasks. Uh, you, you could just look at the lookbook and say, I like that, I want one, you know, or I like that, I want some of those. And so it's very, Very international language and a really beautiful range of, of fashion items and really get the accolades from the industry as well. So we're not talking about, you know, something that's made in China really cheaply. It's it's of high quality products. And Stella, you were showing us yesterday your shoes, weren't you? I mean, really, really the first pair of shoes you bought seven years ago, you told me, right? Mm -hmm. When you first started, beautiful gold shoes. And they're still, still absolutely fine. Absolutely beautiful. So the quality is very important and um you know that you need to be able to say with confidence to the people that you introduce the products to that they're going to last that they're going to be luxurious and they're going to be 
um, in, stay in fashion because they're classic fashion. And that's the key to it. You know, it's international classic fashion. Some reason or another, right now in the UK, the kids are walking around with ripped jeans. I don't really understand why, because my mother would have told me to throw them out, right? But so the kids seem to love these ripped jeans. Um, so those fashions come and go. We've got really high quality, beautiful fashion accessories as well, luggage and shoes and belts and jewelry. And then on top of that, we've got these amazing um, consumable products that people use every day. So it's a question of having uh, like your own Amazon. It's like your own Amazon website full of products. You've got a whole email full of products that people use and love and you just simply ask them to switch their brand instead of using their old toothpaste use this one instead of using their old shower gels use this one and they're going to get much better higher quality products like shampoos and, and things they're going to use around the home you know so it's not just about fashion then of course we've got uh, fol which you know there's a whole subject we all know about uh, wonderful wonderful products very healthy for our bodies and you know helping people to recover in some cases from some sort of the situations they've got so you know these these are all the key points that i look for consumable products um, high focus products that are new to a market so the company's got 17 18 years almost track record so that's solid people are earning income at every level you know we have got creative millionaires already so it's amazing opportunity to bring to a new market and we're very busy right now in the philippines as you know and we're just about to kind of start working through into india amazing markets but how would you build your business into the philippines and india if you're living in england or if you're living in ottawa or if you're living in the united states it's very simple you simply get onto facebook and linkedin and use the social media and that's a subject for another day, right? But um, using social media effectively to promote yourself um, and your product brand, let people see you wearing products, let people see you using products. Just a minute or 30 seconds on a video with your camera is all you need to do. I found this today. And you can be washing your hair. Do crazy things. Get people to engage with you. See, because we all have the same product, we all have the same opportunity. Some people are making fortunes and some people are just getting by. Why is that? It's the same product, same compensation plan, same opportunity. It's about your focus. It's about your intention. It's about your excitement, your enthusiasm and engaging with people through social media. Those are the key things. It's a long answer to a short question, wasn't it, Stella? Sorry. It was. It was. And we learned a lot as well. So despite all that, uh, uh, Scott, um, what are the reservations? And, you know, there are a lot of myths surrounding um, MLMs. How, with your experience, can one break that or decode that myth that surrounds that market and give us uh, the, the, uh, the, um, the reasons or your reservation or people's reservations? And with you having a 30-year experience, how can you give us that knowledge of decoding that myth and being able to crack that code as soon as we meet people without them giving you 10, uh, 20 questions. How can you help us there? Well, I had to have some more British tea to answer that one. I mean, uh, cheers. That's a quite a tough question, Stella. Thank you. Um, so the answer to it really is much, much easier now than it's ever been. Because in the past, you really had to kind of justify this method of distribution and you had to explain to people what that was all about you know now it's very simple because everybody's used to buying products online you know that wasn't around 30 years ago 38 years ago even right it wasn't around then we had to adver advertise in the newspaper we had to com be confronted by these people saying oh that's a pyramid sale well, I've been to Egypt and they haven't sold their pyramids yet, I promise you. So the structure is always confused people. But now it's very simple because everybody understands Amazon. So you can deflect this very, very simply. So this is our business. We're Opulence International. These are our products. And what we do is we set up you with an automated 
e-mall or shopping center of your own online. Have you heard of Amazon? Yes, of course. Have you heard of Shopify? Yeah, probably. That's the same thing, except we've set that up for you. It's your own little shop and you've got your personal ID to log in and share that link with people all over the world. And some will buy, some won't, but some will. And they're the ones that you wanna focus on. Don't get bogged down with these explanations about historical uh, parts of our industry, which are really irrelevant now. It's all about social networking, it's social proof, and that's a very important thing, is that how you engage with people, and, and that is about showing the products, using the products, and having little videos of yourself on Instagram, on TikTok. People say to me, oh, why do you use TikTok? That's for kids. Yeah, but the kids get on there and go, hey, grandma, you need some of this stuff, right? <laughs> and uh, I'm going to buy you a present from them. So, you know, the kids are engaging with the adults all the time. Please don't ignore them. Uh, get onto TikTok. I read recently that... Um, the real estate industry is now using TikTok very effectively for promoting property. So you know, it's, it's all changing all the time. You have to keep ahead of what's going on. Um, using Facebook uh, pages, that's the business side of Facebook, because there's two parts, you know, right? There's the profile. That's the bit where you take photographs of your lunch and uh, pictures of the dog and, you know, your Auntie Betty and all that kind of stuff. Uh, whereas pages is the business part. So you have to have a profile first, but then you can set up your opulence business page, which you can then promote to people, share stories, and get engaged with other, other members of your team and share their stories. That's all about content, okay? There's, um, there's a great book that um, I've got here, which I really enjoy. It's called Epic Content Marketing by a guy called... Joe Palizzi, and I found it on Amazon, started reading a little bit about it and decided to buy it. And this is all about creating content for social media. And what it says is that you need to be engaged all the time. You need to have your face associated with your products because people buy you and then they buy your products, right? If they like you, trust you and want to engage with you, then they're more likely to. And so the more you appear online with your products and talking about how you can help people, um, all the better. Anyway, that a little plug for Joe. I don't get any commission off his book, but um, it's really good news. I would, I would definitely recommend you read that. Though, so there is an education process about all of this, Stella, as you know. You know, personal development is one thing, but also learning to use these tools. And we've got this amazing piece of equipment that's free online called Google. And you can Google everything, right? You can, how do I create a business page on Facebook? Boom. Well, somebody's created a video on that and they'll tell you for free, right? Uh, how do I promote my products in the best way on Instagram? Bang, another video pops up. Someone will tell you. So you've got to sort of engage and do your research in the same way you would do with any conventional business. But all of this information that you would have had to go to university for, as I did, right, back in 95, is now freely available. You don't have to pay to go to university in Chicago or anywhere else come to that. You could do it all online. So it's an amazing time to be involved. Again, that was a very long answer to a short question. I'm sorry about that, Stella. It's all right, uh, Scott. You, uh, we are here to hear about your work uh, in this um, business. And... Uh, you spoke about our products a few minutes ago, and um, can um, can you um, tell us if you've tried the products and which one is your favourite? Well, you know, I'm I'm still waiting for my my shoes and belt to come, which I'm uh, hoping is going to be here this next week. Um, and somebody's asked me on the line here in the chat to put the name of this book in, so I'm going, just going to write it in quickly. It's called Epic content marketing by Joe P U L I Z Z I Joe Polizzi. There we are. It's on Amazon. It's a hardback. Okay. I like collecting books. 
uh, my son's just bought me two nice elephant headed uh, book book uh, ends at the moment. So I'm having to get some more books. <laughs> um, favorite products. Right. Well, <clears throat> FOL for definite. I mean, I'm taking that every day, which is really good. Building up immune system. You know, we've all gone through that dreadful couple of years of lockdown and fear over getting our immune system compromised and getting COVID. Dreadful. It's horrible, wasn't it? So, you know, you and I were talking, Stella, weren't we, yesterday, how um, you, you, you didn't get any re reaction having had your jabs because you were on FOL. Your immune system is strong. And that's something we need to encourage all of our friends and loved ones to be on FOL. Absolutely. It's an essential part. I mean, it's proven for so long now, uh, the health benefits. And it's better to sort of prevent than cure, right? I know <laughs> in Japan, you only pay your doctor when you're well <laughs> okay when you're sick it's free it's a clever system um so you know keeping our health together is very important uh watching what we eat and taking great supplements like that but also um i have to say i'm really enjoying having a shower uh, more every day now because the the shower gel and the shampoo conditioner is is fabulous it's better than anything i found in the in the you know the one pound stores that we have where you buy all that stuff normally quality again it's so important um you know that you share the quality of the products they may be a little more expensive i understand but if you're getting quality and you're going to put putting good stuff on your body and you're you're getting rid of fluoride and you're using uh silver in, in your in your toothpaste you know that that that's that's something that taking care of your future isn't it there's no point building residual income if you're not going to be around to enjoy it is there <laughs> so my next question yes Stella. having been in other companies and haven't done so much basically you said i've been there i've done that and comparing that to opulence global compensation plan how does that compare can you enhance that and let our partners know that they are in a good place. So how can you take that? Now, I think everybody's been voting on the compensation plan today online, haven't they? I've noticed all that's going on. Business from business for home are doing a, um, a rating. You can, you can put it in. But apart from that, at the end of the day, uh, I think the compensation plan is very, very fair. Um, it gives you a unique opportunity that I've not seen before, where you can actually put in for your credits and you, you can actually draw down from that later on. If you don't actually want to have product that particular month, uh, you can leave it in the bank if you like, can't you? And then mm -hmm. you can draw down on it. I remember uh, Rene saying he's bought his wife a beautiful uh, diamond and uh, one of his diamond, but it was it was beautiful uh, ring. I think he said it was <laughs> around 40,000 uh, at the time. So he saved that up in his bank for doing that. And that's a great way to keep the consistency of your business growing. The point is with network marketing, you must have a team of people in your organization that are consistently purchasing product month in, month out. That's so important to build your residual income for the future. So that method of, of, of the way that the plan's been developed, that you can have those credits there, and you know that their they're preferred shopping each month is gonna go ahead. And it ensures you've got a strong business. And it's really important that you work with your people. So I say uh, you need to like people, right? Uh, you need to work with the people you like and help them to establish their business. And if you can duplicate through three levels, so the people you personally introduce and then help them to find at least two people, okay? And help those two people to find two people. Now, if you've duplicated that through three levels, then there's a good chance that they're going to stay in place and you get less attrition. Attrition meaning some people will stop, right? Just a matter of fact, in life, in everything. Some people will do it, some people will do it for a little while, some people will quit, and some people will join. So you're constantly putting new people into the system. I think it's a big mistake to get into a management mode, as I call it, where you know, you've got a great team and they're all working, and then they're suddenly looking at you and they're saying, well, what are you doing, right? You're, you're, on, you're on the beach, you're having a barbecue, and where were you? So I always bring my team, uh, when I was working in, as a distributor, I'd have barbecues at, at home, and I'd invite 
my team members and invite them to invite their team members. So we end up with 30, 40 people and we all get to know each other. And if people know each other at a, at a heart level, they'll tend, tend to stay with the program because they love being involved in the team, right? And that's it. It's a community. It's a social thing. Um, that's the wonderful thing about networking. Although it's now moving online and we can go international and expand our business internationally and we can use Zoom like we are now, mm. but we can also work together in community. And that's very important too. One thing I would say that I've had great success with in the past is helping uh, good causes. So let's say, for instance, um, you're a member of a tennis club or, or you've got a local tennis club near you. Ask them if they've got any junior players that are, are struggling, the family struggling to support those junior players in moving up their career. For instance, you know, young Johnny or young Mary uh, wants to go to tennis to become a tennis pro. And the teacher says, yes, they've got definitely got the, the ability to do that. But the parents say, well, I can't really afford to send them to the national school, right? So there's a problem. So there you can you can step in and you can say, look, by encouraging your team and the, and the club to become promoters of opulence, then they're going to everybody in the club can help uh, to raise funds through a certain position that's placed into the into the club. So somebody manages one position and then builds out under that position. All the members of the club are buying product because they want to help little Johnny and Mary to raise mm -hmm. funds to go to their national school, right? That could be done with a church just as well. If you've got a pastor, you talk to the pastor, how can we raise more money for the funds to help this poor family here or other causes they want to, to, to work with the church, get everybody in the congregation, starting with the minister, with the pastor, building that rapport and friendship amongst the community and raising funds for the church. Okay, so you can various different ways you can leverage situations. Um, I once had an American footballer who'd retired and, and lost his income. He wasn't a great public speaker. Uh, he was good with his feet, right? He was a good footballer and he could run, but uh, he'd retired. So I said, okay, what we need to do is to go and find your old fan club, right? And we, we, we ran some ads. This is going back a while, back in the 80s, but we were running ads saying, uh, you know, I don't even remember his name now. It's such a long time ago. But he, he was a player for the Miami Dolphins. That much I remember. And we said, you know, he's back in back on track and back in business and he's building a team. If you'd like to come and meet your hero of the last 30 years in football, come to this event. So people flock to the event to come and say hi to this guy that, you know, he stopped playing uh, football 15 years earlier, but everybody knew who he was. And, and he, we sort of coached him to make this announcement. He was involved with our business and we started to build underneath him. So retired um, professional sports people, uh, anyone that's been on TV. Stella mentioned a little bit. I did a bit of TV work for BBC television, a uh, program called Living in the Sun. You'll find some old copies of it uh, on YouTube, I'm sure. But that was about British people buying property in Spain. And I had a lot of fun with that. And it gave me a lot of confidence uh, to speak in public, to, to, to work to a camera. And, um, you know, as, as, as life has moved on, I've had to go and travel around the world and speak on stages and it's helped. But, you know, keep it at a really friendly human level. It's not about having a great big ego or a big Mercedes car, particularly. You've got to relate to people and relate to their situations, you know. And we've got something for everyone here. We really have, haven't we, Stella? We have, definitely. And, uh, you know, nobody is, is, is born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Mm -hmm. We are not from the royal family. Even then, we have challenges. And those challenges come once in a while in life. True. With your work in the business world and in everything that you must have at least faced some. Can you tell us two of those challenges that you have ever faced and how you overcome it and turn it around to work for your better good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just after um, I left Spain, um, that was 2008. That was the property crash, which completely wiped me out. You know, uh, I, I, I lost my capital, uh, lost my property. 
uh, as many people did through that. You know, I wasn't alone by any stretch of the imagination. But I went back to network marketing because this is where I built my income in the first place and how I acquired my property. And, and so that, that's where I came back to. And I often say to people, you know, whatever business they're in, and you'll find this anywhere in the world, there's still what the Americans call mum and pop businesses. You know, they're little independent stores or maybe it's a dry cleaning store or a laundry or a cafe or a restaurant or a fruit and vegetable store or a clothing store. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, but the independents, the small family owned businesses, um, we have many of them in the UK. You can walk down any town street and you'll find these little independents. And I go in and I have coffee, you know, I mean, a little coffee bar and I go in early in the morning uh, or as they're packing up at the end of the day. That's the best two times. And I, I order a coffee and I start to chat with the guy that's sweeping up. This is this your business. He says, yes. I said, how's it going? Oh, it's very difficult through lockdown. I mean, we went through a bad time. We had to close and now we're having to work really hard to bring our customers back. So have you ever thought of adding another business to your voice? Oh, I don't have time. Don't have time to do anything else. I said, well, if I could show you a way to increase your profit, but without increasing your overhead or any extra time, would that be something that may be of interest to you? And he said, well, well, well what is this? I said, well, let, let's, let's fix a time when I can come and explain it properly. And I'll show them the business opportunity because they can run this alongside whatever else they're doing. And that gives them another income level because they know so many people if they're in business, right? And they have good discipline because they know how to run a business. They know it requires effort and consistency and time and patience uh, to build a business. These are very important qualities um, that some people just don't know. They've been worked as an employee and they turn up for work, punch the time clock and go home. So it's a very different uh, way of thinking to become an entrepreneur and run your own business. It requires discipline. So go and find small business owners. They're hurting right now, I promise you. They're being squeezed because of the cost of fuel, electricity, services, rates. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem everywhere in the world and it's not going away, by the way. So we're seeing more and more people coming into network marketing than ever before because it's so simple. It doesn't require any more capital. They don't have to fill up their store with a lot of product. We'll ship it for them anywhere in the world, right? So it's yeah. very, very good, uh, an addendum, an adjunctive to their business. So look for those people in your communities. Um, ask silly questions. So excuse me, do you know anyone in India? I said, well, why do you want to know that? Well, my business is expanding into India right now, and I'm looking for some leaders. Well, I happen to know a guy who's got a restaurant down the road. Maybe you should talk to him. Okay. All right. Well, my business is expanding into the Philippines or into England or wherever you want to go, right? And you can find contacts in your community and start to build your business on a global basis. So, yeah, I mean, you know, all people go through hard times, as you say, Stella. It's how you face it. It's how you deal with it. You know, you can go and hide under a... Uh, a tree and hope it goes away or you go and be proactive as I'm suggesting and you learn new skills uh, such as the ones we have with this business and and help people to experience what we're experiencing which is a lot of fun and uh, you know it's hard work uh, it, it's simple but it's not easy right it's simple but it's not easy that's different so it's a simple process of talking to people about great products that they're going to be using day in and day out, plus some luxury products that they can acquire for those special occasions, right? Mm -hmm. And and helping other people to do the same. And what a fabulous way to make uh, make an income, you know? Travel the world, have fun, make meeting new people. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much um, for that, um, Scott. And um, in terms of um, Opulence Global and where you have been in terms of MLM. What key point will you use to convince someone to be a part and parcel of Opulence Global? Is it the products, the family ethos, or probably fashion? All three. 
<laughs> it, it is, of course, it's the products. Yes, everything starts with the products. If the products are no good in a network company, then people will very quickly find out. And, you know, social media being what it is, they'll tell everyone, you know. So this is so important that you're, if you're having great results, that you do a little piece to camera. And you say, look, I just bought this product. I'm, I'm using it. Or my friend here, uh, I introduced uh, last week. She's got a story or he's got a story to share with you. Just go through all of your contacts and ask them for their opinion, right? You're doing some market research on behalf of an international company called Oculus, right? They have some wonderful products. And I'd like to share them with you to get your feedback because we need to have some information back from it. Can, can I get you to just try this product out for a month, see what you think of it? Right. And what a nice way to approach someone, asking them for their help. Uh, mm -hmm. to, and people love to give their help, right? And so by doing that, you're encouraging people to try the product. And we know, obviously, we wouldn't be in business 17 years, Stella, would we? It's impossible to grow an international company if the products are no good. So it's so important. I hear it all the time. Oh, is that something to do with selling? Oh, I can't sell anything. Mm -hmm. I said, you don't have to sell anything. You just have to try the product. And if you like it, then just tell people. You went to see a movie the other day. You enjoyed the movie. You tell people about it. You went to a great restaurant. You enjoyed the food and the service. You tell people about it. It's a natural thing we do, isn't it? As humans, we do that. So I just want you to try the product. And if you like it, tell people. OK, and then you can help me with my business. Mm -hmm. So always ask from the point of view of help and what I can do for you. Don't don't think about the money. Don't think about the business. It's helping people, blessing people with a great opportunity and great products. It's a different mindset. Thank you so much, um, Scott, for that. And um, to the, uh, the, um, the meeting that we had yesterday in the United Kingdom. UK is a multi ethnic and uh, has a multi ethnicity. Sure. So, from your uh, previous experience, how did you conquer the United Kingdom in terms of the the type of companies that you were involved in? Not um, um, how can you crack those um, those ethnic divides? Mm -hmm. You have ethnicity in the United Kingdom. And they are in clusters. How did you break through that link? Mm. Allow them, uh, allow them, or, or allow you yourself to be involved in their lives and get them to get involved with you. Well, I'm a friendly guy. Okay, that's the first thing. I don't have any issues with race, creed, or anything else. You know, and people are people to me, and if they're nice, they're nice. If they're not nice, then I walk the other way. It doesn't matter what where they're from. Okay. So I'll start in the way I've explained. Um, you know, we have a lot of people that have come to the UK um, as America did, you know, 150 years ago or whatever it was when there was this huge migration from uh, Europe into, into the new found land, into America. And people gave up their homes, left their families and started a new life. And that's what's happened in the UK over the last 30 years. We've seen many people from many different backgrounds, different countries, war-torn countries, politically difficult countries to live in, poverty, et cetera, coming to the UK. And because of our background of the old empire and the, the, the Commonwealth, we've welcomed them, okay? We've welcomed them in our communities and they, they've had to struggle to get started. They've had to struggle with the language. They've had to struggle to be accepted. And so, once that process has kind of been with them a little while and the friendly face from the British community comes along into their shop and they, they've got some very nice sweet potatoes, I say, hey, I'd like to buy some product from you, right? And so I work with my community and I, I'll go to the Indian restaurants, I'll go to the Filipinos, the Thai restaurants, the Chinese, the, the African Caribbean restaurants, the, you know, wherever we've got Ethiopian restaurants, we've got every restaurant you can imagine here in the UK and London and Manchester and Birmingham and, you know, all the big cities. So I would engage with people. And, and as long as they can speak English and I can communicate, I mean, I speak a little Spanish, which helps, but most of the time, um, yesterday, we, we were talking to the, the people there from Somalia, there was no issue. 
they were all speaking English, right? All those ladies, um, not a problem. Uh, you know, it, as long as you can communicate, but here's the good thing. Once you've made that connection and that friendship, you can then explain, actually, one of the reasons I wanted to meet with you, and I'm, I love coming to your restaurant, absolutely, and, and now we're becoming friends, but I have a business opportunity. I'm expanding my business into Somalia, into India, into Africa, wherever it is, right? And I'm looking for some help. I want to help people like you've done to make that bridge crossing and, and have an opportunity to earn income in their own country from a global network. And they go, well, how, what is this all about? So while well, you becoming a partner with me, we're going to work together shoulder to shoulder to help the communities here that you know, and also back in your own country. Definitely. Okay. So that's Thank how I much. Thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, it's good to know um, because, you know, sometimes you have to um, take a step back because you do not want to offend anybody. And then just, yeah, warm yourself in gradually. Or uh, like you said, go into their shop. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. That's well, exactly. That's a good old English expression you picked up there. <laughs> Definitely. So in, in, in view of um, Opulence Global, if you stand as, as an outsider looking into Opulence Global, how can you recommend Opulence to someone who has never done any um, multi-level marketing, but you see that they need to supplement their income in one way or the other, how can you recommend the company to them? What tools would you use to get that to them without confusing them? Yeah, I mean, I, I would sort of start start with the lookbook, right? It's pretty obvious, you know, you, <coughs> excuse me. You've got, uh, you've got your lookbook and um, there it is, I think, there, yes. So it's a beautiful presentation, isn't it? So you, you could be sitting, have a cup of coffee in a restaurant, uh, where you want to talk to somebody and you can be looking through your own book, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll see that these beautiful things in there and it could be, look at this, oh, these are beautiful. Excuse me, did you see these? Isn't that lovely? And you, you engage with them, right? With your lookbook. And they say, oh my word, I love shoes. I love, oh, look, oh my goodness, look, at, oh my. And you start to get this rapport with people because it's a very, very smart publication, isn't it? And do you know what? I think I can get these products at wholesale. I've read about it here. Would that be of interest to you? I mean, you know, you can start the conversation however you want. Get this thing about MLM out of your head. It really is not relevant any more ever again. We need to be talking about the product catalog, getting people interested in the product, and then talking to them about trying stuff out. And then once you've got that rapport going, you can talk about business opportunities. It depends who you're talking to, right? You mm -hmm. can go at businesses about business, or you can go to people about product. And I mean, you know, you, you need to kind of assess the people you're talking to in some way, you know what I mean? Because you, you choose to buy a Cinquecento, the Fiat, little tiny Fiat car, Fiat 500, or you choose to buy uh, a Rolls Royce mm -hmm. or an Aston Martin, James Bond. Mm -hmm. well, why, why do people choose one or the other, right? Well, part of it's cost, but not always. It could be comfort. I mean, I know, I know millionaires that drive around in little minis because it's convenient in London to be in a smaller mm -hmm. car. They don't want to be in a BMW or a Mercedes or a Rolls Royce, okay? Yeah. You don't always judge people uh based on these things but if they if they're dressed smartly if they look like they enjoy uh nice things then they're a good person to talk to uh we're a premium brand product right um but then you look at it, the philippines where the incomes are not so high uh for generally speaking but people love the opportunity to a chance to have a business of their own that they can share with their friends and build something and it's so busy out there now. Thailand's the same. I was speaking to Ramin yesterday evening. He's in Thailand. <clears throat> He's saying, well, they're about, um, it's coming up to 10 o'clock at night there now. And 
amazing. You know, he, he was at three o'clock in the morning chatting to me and I was at 10 o'clock at night here. <laughs> it was, it was oh, crazy. Wow. But, but he said it's growing so fast over there because people are desperate for opportunity. Now, that's not, that's not necessarily the same as in East, uh, Western Europe. It may be different in Germany, in England, and France. But the motivation is similar because of the financial pressures and because people still like to have nice things. Yes. Okay. So don't get bogged down with all of the stuff from the past of the MLMs and the networks. It's not relevant. We're talking about online shopping. Everyone understands that, don't they? Definitely. So um, having um, told us uh, um, all that, as a last word before I open the doors for the um, our partners to ask questions, can you give us a last word about Opulence Global, what attracted you and what is, uh, how far you want to take this to Europe and what is your next step? Oh, well, the, the, a, lot, a lot of that depends on, on, the, on how we structure things because right now the focus is on building Southeast Asia and India. And in the UK, we have a unique position here as, as Stella and I have kind of tried to explain, we have people from all over the world here. So you can tap into those expanding markets. And I mean, I, I, th th that's the main reason, Stella, because you know, you've got an opportunity to ship product from Canada or, East, or, or Southeast Asia and the Philippines, where we've got warehousing, to anywhere in the world. And you don't have to hold that stock, right? So people are making their own buying decisions they're paying with the online with their credit card or visa, and it's making automatic transfer into Canadian dollars, and the purchase goes through and the product shipped. Now, if you can have a global business, if you can have an Amazon, like like Elon Musk has, has done, um, and made himself, is that right, guy? Elon Musk, isn't it? With, yeah, he's made himself <laughs> a billionaire, right? Well, even if you had a tiny percentage of that with this shop, with like opulence, you're going to make an income that's going to far exceed anything you can do by your own physical efforts day by day. You know, there, there was uh, John Paul Getty, American billionaire. He once said, I would rather have 1% of 100 men's work than 100% of my own work. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Because if, you, if you're in a manual job or if you're in a job where you have to work in a factory or you clock in and you clock out every day, if you're sick or you won't retire, that's the end of your income, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if you can build a business through helping others to build a business mm -hmm. on a global basis where you don't have these necessarily, uh, you don't have this necessarily these opinions about what the system is or isn't, it just people hungry for an opportunity that they can start a business of their own with their family with a, with a smartphone. Uh, you don't, you know, you just need one of these things and, and uh, the willingness to go out, contact people, connect with people that you can run the whole business on this thing, right in the palm of your hand, everything you need to know. And, you know, if I want to type a letter to somebody in Italy, I'll go on to Google translate, write my letter, press the button, translates it to Italy and I send it out by email. Amazing. We never had this stuff 30 years ago, Stella. No, it, we didn't. It's incredible. Yes. It just requires you to sit down and think and mm. take stock of your situation and say, right, let's get a strategy together here. How are we going to do it? And work with your team, work with your sponsor, work with your enroller, work with others. Don't, don't think you're isolated on your own. You're not. We've got all the support you need. Definitely. I thank think you. I told you more than I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, please. Um, that is um, the last question from me to Scott. Uh, if you have a question, please fire away. Just raise your hand and I will unmute you for you to ask your question. They were great questions, though, I have to say. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we didn't, didn't rehearse this, did we? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. You, you caught me no, on the card, but I hopefully everybody got some good information out of it. Let's hope so, eh? 
Thank you so much for being here. Please, uh, if you wish to ask uh, Scott some questions, please can you let me know? And then I'll unmute you for you to ask um, the question. Please raise your hand if you wish to do so, and I will give you that opportunity. So he's all yours right now. So you can- I love this book, isn't it amazing? Yes, now you have it. <laughs> so you can buy all the shoes and all the, the jewelry that you can find there. <laughs> um, Please just raise your hand and, and I'll give you the opportunity. Now um, is your time. Um, I've put him out there as a target practice. So really just fire and he will answer. Some nice nice comments coming through in the chat. I appreciate that guys. That's very nice of you to say those things. And I do hope you've picked up a few tips, you know? That's the thing with, uh, you know, an old guy some, can sometimes share a few bits of knowledge of information, eh? <laughs> Yes, those are the nuggets that we, we need in life to go uh, to get to our future. So um, are there no questions? Does it mean that everybody is so happy and they haven't got any questions? If there's anything I didn't ask and um, you wish I had asked, please um, ask the question. And uh, We've recorded it, right? So we can, we can share it on a recording if anybody wants it. Yes, it's recorded. <laughs> Yeah. And um, well, I don't, I don't you know. I think that just to sum up, I think, to be honest, that the, the, the very simple way to explain this business is, is um, it's about consistency. If you <laughs> set yourself little bites. OK, here, here's one for you. Somebody said to me, how do you eat an elephant? Mm. How do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's you may have a big project or a big goal, but you need to break it down into small bite sized pieces. So I would say, look, if I can make a, uh, a note in my in my agenda, my diary to speak to five people a day about the product or about the opportunity. Okay, well, then maybe they speak to them about both, but just five people a day just while I'm going about my day-to-day -day routine and always carry this with you. Get a hard copy of this book and carry it with you. It doesn't matter how catty and dog-eared it gets. Go and sit in a cafe, sit looking at it and turn to the person that's next to you, a complete stranger and say, oh my goodness, this is a lovely catalog. Have you seen this? Start up a conversation. You'd be surprised. People like to engage if you've got something not like you're a kind of a strange person having a conversation with them they don't know but if you've got a prop like this book mm -hmm. it's a common it's a common ground do you understand what i mean everybody <laughs> knows fashion everybody mm -hmm. can relate to what that is it doesn't matter what language they speak mm -hmm. um and just start looking through and, and making comments i'm thinking of getting my my partner a new handbag which one do you like or I'm thinking of buying my son a, a new pair of, a new watch. Which one would you suggest? Engage with people. This is a fantastic tool to start a conversation anywhere in the world. I could build a business, I promise you, anywhere in the world with this book. Mm. Just this book. That's my tip. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Scott, for that. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. Let me tell you a secret. What Scott is telling you about that lookbook is actually what got me into the then. Uh -huh. It was fashion. And I was actually going to another uh, company uh, uh, presentation. And one of our partners sat there and she opened the book. And because I was into fashion mm -hmm. and I said, oh, can I look at that? So oh, actually, that is the company that I'm involved in. And that got me. I even dreamt about those shoes. And to, <laughs> I am here. I'm, I'm not really, I'm not joking. So that's another tool that you need to carry along because it got me. And I never thought about that as well. So now that Scott has reminded me, I'm going to carry mine along. And even if someone wants to take it home with them, I just write my number and give it to them because I can buy more. So mm. gentlemen, you've heard those nuggets from a man who has got 30 years experience. What else can he tell you that he hasn't done before? In terms of falling, he has fallen and got up and he's still standing. We yep. all 
a lot of things. All you need to do is just fall, get up. So long as you fall backward, I tell you, my dear partners, <laughs> when you look up, you will definitely get up. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm saying thank you to Scott for being here and for all of you for actually grazing this occasion and you know spending that time Sunday with us. And I'm going to release you in a bit. Don't forget to join me at 7 p.m., 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the European and uh, UK call. We are going to rock it. So ladies and gentlemen, things are happening. Let's not just lie low. Get up and let's take this business to infinity. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody, and God Bye. bless you all. Bye. Thank you so much, Scott. We will. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.